we're here at IAV 2020 and I'm speaking to John Mackey, Chief Engineer, Electric Drive and Propulsion Kinetic. John, um, we're standing beside uh, an example of Kinetic's X-Drive. Um, this appears to be a, a smaller unit than, than Kinetic have, have shown before. Could you tell us a little bit about this unit and, and the evolution of Kinetic's X-Drive? Okay. Yes, Sean. Um, we've actually been working on electric drive since 2004 and we started off with very small units suited to vehicles around about 18 tonnes and we gradually moved through the weight classes through 30 tonnes up to the one we showed here last year which was for a main battle tank 80 tonne vehicle. Um, since then we've actually had re-examined the principle of EX drive to look at what could be done for lighter vehicles particularly robotic and autonomous in the 15 tonne class which has given us the opportunity to reduce the cost significantly. The larger vehicle types of transmission work out at about 500 pounds a kilowatt output power which is comparable to a conventional transmission. By looking at what is available from the automotive world, we've come up with our new design for a 15 tonne vehicle, which is about half that price per kilowatt. All EX drives uh, combine electric propulsion, which is very efficient and very torque dense, so you get maximum torque at zero speed, so you accelerate very quickly, with mechanical cross drive for regenerative steering. In the past, people have tried electric drive for vehicles and it hasn't worked because they've sized the electric motors for both propulsion and steering. It actually takes more power to steer a track vehicle than to propel it. By combining mechanical steering with electric drive, we've come up with a, a very good compromise in performance, mass and size. Our transmissions are smaller and lighter than a conventional equivalent. And being part of a series electric system, you're not linked to the engine. All the power is transmitted electrically, so you can distribute parts of the system around the vehicle to better suit architecture, protection, crew layout. It gives you a lot of advantages on that side. As well as being more efficient, it use, obviously uses less fuel, which means you don't have to move as much fuel around the battlefield, and you've got a very large electrical power generation capability. So the large unit we had here last year is rated at a megawatt, and then there's a battery pack on top of that. So it means that power is available for other systems on the vehicle, such as directed energy weapons, detection systems, and communications. So, so you say that Kinetic has been working on, on the X-Drive since around about 2004. Um, has X-Drive, or any comparable system by a, a, any other developer, if indeed one exists, um, been adopted in, in a full-rate production vehicle as yet, or do they still remain uh, very much at prototype stage? Uh, and if they do, uh, why haven't they been adopted? Well, there have been several um, programs in involving AX Drive which uh, on a prototype basis. Unfortunately, they've been in the US and they've been uh, terminated for various reasons. AX Drive has got to a high level of maturity, though, to technology readiness level 7. And in the last project, the Grand Combat Vehicle, we were about to move into limited rate production. So we were, we were right on the cusp of the becoming adopted into a fielded system. Yeah. Things have changed now, everyone's looking at electric drive. We're speaking to all the major OEMs and they all say it's not if, it's when. And uh, because the, the cost of the systems have come down considerably, mainly due to development in the automotive world on the power electronics. The X drive is a very simple system, it consists of motors, gears and shafts. So it, uh, even with the power electronics, it works out comparable price to an existing system. For the, certainly for the heavier vehicles. The lighter unit we've got here is actually about half the price per kilowatt because we've been allowed to, to use um, automotive COTS motors. The larger units are very highly integrated and require specialist electrical machines, which tends to make them a lot more expensive. But for the 15 ton unit, it's about half the price per kilowatt. Uh, and you say this example you're showing here is about 15 tonnes, and you have said, uh, you know, remotely controlled vehicles. Um, one would assume, though, that it would be perfectly at home uh, in a manned vehicle of 15 tonnes. It doesn't have to be unmanned. Quite correct, Sean. The advantage of electric drive for the autonomous and unmanned vehicles is the precision of control, so they're particularly suited to that because it's all drive by wire. So you can actually control the vehicle very accurately. It's perfectly suitable for a, a manned vehicle in that class, quite correct. 
and with this particular unit, um, are you doing anything with it at the moment, as in fitting it, installing it into anything that you can talk about, or, or is that not something you can disclose at this moment? Uh, can't disclose the people we're working with, but we have had a lot of interest in all classes of EX drive, right from the lightest through to 50 ton, which is the medium one, which is looking to the next uh, generation of combat vehicles. Nearly all nations are looking at a new combat vehicle in the 2030, 2035 time frame, and they are considering electric drive seriously. And in the heavier vehicles, we've done quite a lot of work in studies for retrofit into main battle tanks. It's perfectly suited to something like a Challenger 2, the heavy EX drive, and it would give much better performance. The example we have here is, is for a tracked platform. Is there a, a version of the X drive that is designed to fit wheeled platforms? Well, Sean, we actually started work on wheeled platforms before the tracked ones from the late 1990s for the Ministry of Defence research programme. We have a solution for in-wheel hub drives, but it works quite different because a wheeled vehicle doesn't need to steer the same way as a tracked vehicle. So it's, it's quite a bit simpler, but the technology is identical, a motor, a gearbox and a brake. It's a bit like just a part of the EX drive which fits inside the wheel. Currently we're working on a programme for the US Office of Naval Research, producing a uh, 55 kilowatt unit as part of the advanced um, reconnaissance vehicle programme as a technology demonstrator. And that will be running this Easter. Uh, and as it will fit wheeled platforms, um, is, is there any uh, option of this type of technology for, for the commercial marketplace? Might we find it in uh, light vans or even possibly motor cars? Um, there are people out there selling in wheel drives. The, the big difference with a motor car is it doesn't need the torque speed range that a military vehicle does. So you can buy Protein Electric, for instance, produce a, uh, an in wheel drive for a, for, a, for a car. But the cars do not have to do the obstacle crossing that a, a military vehicle does. They don't have to go up such steep slopes and they don't have to get over obstacles or cross gaps, you need a lot higher torque. When that's combined with the speed you need from a modern wheeled vehicle, you come with a fairly unique solution and it's very highly integrated again, which will make it more expensive to get it into the wheel. You could do. Um, we have had interest from um, people like um, road trains in Australia, where they have a very high, heavy haulage requirement, so that they want something very torque dense and it could have application there. Um, a lot of buses have in-wheel hub drives, but again, buses don't go up 60% grades or have to climb one meter obstacles, so they're not as powerful. So the technology we've got here, yes, it is applicable, but it's probably too expensive. And, and if I may finally ask you to look into your crystal ball, um, how long do you think it will be before we see a productionized military vehicle with X-Drive or something comparable in it? I think in the next decade, in the uh, 2030s. But uh, military programs actually aren't that common, and you need one to start from the beginning. It's, you can retrofit it, but it's much better if the vehicle's designed from scratch around it. And we're seeing that now. We're, so we are working with several OEMs on whether this can be applied. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, sure.